Uh, I've got a gold roll. I'm going to do the gold roll. My free VIP weekly gold roll. Maybe I'll get a... Uh... Maybe I'll roll 100? Nope. <laughs> I've rolled a 20. I did an experiment, and I'll just... I'll give you guys, like, the result of the experiment. If you If you were here last week, I tried running Twitch without ads. Basically, I turned all my ads off on the channel to see what would happen. Um, just without boring you guys, uh, the, the real quick story is like when you stream on Twitch prior to being an affiliate, you're not associated with Twitch at all. So they don't have any ads. So if you if you don't become an affiliate or a partner, you can just stream on Twitch and there won't be any ads on your channel that I know of. I, maybe Twitch will eventually run an ad or two on your channel just as a as a matter of course. But it really doesn't kick up until you become an affiliate and then when you become a partner. Um, I'm not a partner. I'm just an affiliate at the moment. But so the point is like you when you set up your account, you have to pick how many how much ads you want to run. And they encourage you to run a lot of them because that's how you basically get monetized, right? Like you a lot of the income from the channel comes from the ads. You can turn them way down, but you can't turn them totally off. So that's exactly what I did. I set it to the lowest setting possible, which basically was 30 seconds an hour. And hoping that viewers on my channel who were not subbed would only see 30 seconds an hour, and that would encourage them to stay and watch the stream. It makes sense, right? The more viewers that are watching the stream, the more viewers that are likely to stay, and the less I hate watching ads when I watch people stream. So unless you're subbed, you're going to see ads or unless you're a turbo, you can get turbo and that lets you watch ad free. But so anyway, so, so I turned it to 30 seconds an hour. Well, I streamed for like four to five hours. And at the end, I asked people to let me know how it was, if they saw ads or not. And everybody came back and told me that they saw 30 seconds, about 30 seconds worth of ads every 10 to 15 minutes. And so I actually submitted a ticket to Twitch asking them about this because I'm like, I set it to only show 30 seconds an hour and you were showing 30 seconds every 10 to 15 minutes. What's up with that? That seems to me to be incorrect. Now, maybe I'm reading something incorrectly or maybe it's somewhere buried in like the, the fine print where you, no matter what, like maybe I'm only getting 30 seconds worth of revenue ad per hour but twitch is all is always just going to run ads 30 seconds worth of ads regardless of what i do which is exactly what we saw so unfortunately guys like i tried to turn all the ads as low as i could it didn't work um so now they're just reset back to normal and i mean i think it's if you know um I'm, i will let you guys know if i hear back from twitch about it because i sent them a, a ticket it's something that some streamers do. So if any of you guys ever watch Asmund Gold, uh, he didn't actually he he didn't become an affiliate on Twitch specifically so he doesn't have to show ads. Like he's he his channel, even though he gets twenty thousand people watching him, is not even registered. Like I think he just made the account under his name and he just logs in and streams. He monetizes in different ways, right? So he doesn't need to worry about it. He's in a much different situation. He's orders of magnitude larger than most um, people who stream DDO and way bigger than me. But the point is, I agreed with him in the sense that, you know, he was talking about ads and how he hates watching ads. I know when I go, let's say if I go and watch Jinxie, I'll watch Jinxie. I don't sub to Jinxie. And then when an ad plays, I'll leave and then I'll like go watch Casio or something or 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 Kai or whoever is streaming at the time. And then Kai is a great example of his stream has a ton of ads on it. So usually I don't watch Kai that long because I don't sub to him. So I'll just watch him until an ad comes and I'll pop back over to somebody else. Maybe Somerset or maybe Jinxie again or whatever. My example is that I'm constantly bebopping around on Twitch because ads pop up and then I leave. And I was thinking to myself, well, I know channel viewers of mine probably do the same thing, especially encouraged because I'm not, you know, a big streamer. I don't really get hundreds of people watching me. So there's even less of an incentive to stick around. So if I could turn the ads off, maybe that would help. 
And so we did the experiment and I think we got some good data, but what it showed was that Twitch is definitely has something in the fine print that I don't understand. I'm hoping they get back to me and let me know why when I turn the ads off, they were showing them anyway. So that's the state of that. Um, I think it's a great uh, thing, right? Obviously, no, nothing's perfect. Like YouTube has a ton of ads on it and they're super annoying. The difference though is that on YouTube, you could technically use an ad blocker, although now they have it coded so where that it usually doesn't work. But um, Twitch is much different. You know, you can't really use an ad blocker here. So um, I don't know. I mean, I keep thinking maybe I'll just get turbo myself because I like to watch a bunch of different people and that would cover my base for everything. I think it works for the creators. Like, I think if you watch a creator and you're turbo, the creator gets a percentage of that turbo sub as opposed to like an actual sub to the channel itself. But who knows? I think that Twitch is, is losing money, so I'm sure they're going to alter the, the rates for all that stuff. Supposedly, Twitch and Kick both lose money, but Kick makes it back because it's got a lot of gambling. And um, Twitch is part of Amazon, so they just get funded by Amazon when they come in in the red or something to that effect. Those aren't hard figures, like I'm just sort of making stuff up based on info that I've heard and read on like Twitter and YouTube and things like that. I don't actually know for sure, but I'm sure it's easy to look that stuff up though. But So we're still on the Chaos Mancer. This is life number two. Doing the same build that I did before. And this is going to be my Myth Draenor build. Yeah, Parsnips. Two pre-rolls when you enter the channel. Now four commercials in a row. Yeah, I mean, that's... I, so that's exactly like the what I wanted to turn off. But, you know, that, that was sort of what started the whole thing. Because I deal with that too when I watch people. You know, and I notice that I bounce around when I see a lot of ads, so. I appreciate you guys who, who hang out. A, a lot of times, um, streamers will often say things like, if you want to sh support the channel, give us a follow, give us a sub. Like, that's true, but really the best way to support a channel is just to watch it. Like, that's really the best, so. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know what, I've got to, like, defaulting now i didn't really alter any of it because i'm not until i hear back from twitch i'm not sure that anything i set is really changing anything so but back to ddo um so for myth draenor because it is uh basically like mirkwood the, a lot of the lore for myth draenor is similar to mirkwood and then um the way that they probably have it coded with the mythals and all the wild magic surges. I think that this build that I have is going to work out really well because it gives me the ability to find magical traps with Be My Eyes. And then I also have the ability to, to remove the magical traps using Dispel Magic or Mardenkin's Disjunction. So I think that I'll be like set for Myth Draenor if it is created in a way that references any of the existing material from Myth Draenor and the City of a Thousand Portals and all of the the sentient mythals that were around it. I just think it would be a really um, like important aspect of a build for like a first expedition through there. Like if I were doing a pen and paper game, that's what I would want to have. Um, because I'm not a rogue, but this allows you to be like a pseudo rogue or like a quasi rogue. And this this also gives me access to a lot of other cool stuff. The greatest one being this color spray SLA, which because we are using this prismatic mind becomes a DPS ability. So not only will it CC, but it actually DPSs. And that also allows us to DPS with things like prismatic ray. So this is like a really great ability, this prismatic mind. 
Um, we, we get magic missile immunity, we get fear immunity, we get invisibility, we get um, charisma to hit and damage, we get extra mana. We, we end up getting a free and large. Like I said, we get our quasi trap finding, we get more charisma, which is our main stat. We get a little bit more of our spell critical. So like this tree works really well. And then for here, um, we're doing all in on the top tier. We're doing all in over here on the SLAs. We're doing these wild magic surges up the middle, although I don't have them maxed out. I just put one point in each one. And then we also will max out this plus three to dodge because we are wearing a robe. I've got all of the chaos control one and two. I'm not using them. So we're getting the bad surges, very bad surges. We're getting it all. I have power and chaos uh, turned on. You can see I dragged it to my bar here and clicked it on. Uh, you'll get it in your under your enhancements. You drag it to the bar and turn it on. That raises your caster level plus two, but it also makes it so that you can receive the very bad surges. That's fine. We don't really care. And then here I took we get more critical damage when we're re wearing no armor. The other thing I'm doing over here because I have a lot of racial action points is um, I've got all of this um, core stuff updated, and then I'm using the Springstorm SLA. This is great because this gives us plus two charisma. It gives us a bunch of sonic and electric damage. And even though we're doing mostly chaos damage, this ability does a, a, a damage stripping electric. So if the mob is immune to electric, this will force it to take the electric damage. So we don't really have to worry about it. We can just do this spell to anything. Like it doesn't matter if it's a, um, what are those? The flesh golems that are buffed by electricity they'll still take the damage from it it doesn't matter now i don't i haven't we're, we'll have to actually cast it on a flesh golem and see if we if we haste it or if it makes it so that our damage is just taken and it's immune to that haste haste effect but that plus all the other slas that we have uh, really puts us in a in a solid spot for mana management, and I did a few of these already. Um, I did them on R four, and they weren't very difficult to do, which is great. Considering that we're in heroics, there's usually no reason to do R four in heroics, but. I just wanted to see if I could, and we did. I really want to get to level 20. Our damage is really good. And it's super cheap. That SLA costs two spell points, and it hits really hard. The, um... The grenade, I think it's 25 spell points, that one there, and you can see that hits really hard. Actually, it's only four spell points. So that's even better. So a lot of fun. If you guys haven't tried the Chaos Mancer yet, or Wild Magic in general, I, I highly recommend it. It's, su it's super fun. It gets a little bit uh, annoying. You got to get used to it because, you know, there's a lot of bad stuff that can happen to you. Um, but once you get used to it, it you know, you kind of stop noticing it. I have a feeling on a normal caster I'm going to miss all the weird stuff happening. I did try to go in and do... Uh, I think it's Feast or Famine. And I tried to do it on R4, but I had forgotten to spend my Reaper points. And I can tell you, I got, like, messed up. So just spending 60... I spent 66 Reaper points... Uh, made my character a lot stronger. I was able to go into the R4 after I spec'd my, my points out, and it was way easier. So it just is a, um, a demonstration, I think, of like how much power we actually get from those. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. Like, it just adds to the power creep, but we can, we'll try this one on R4 just so you guys can see. Uh, there's really no reason to do it on R4, but the point is just to show you, like, that we can.
I think it's a little bit more interesting for a stream too, right? So the worst that we have to worry about are the Reapers. But we can take care of them pretty quickly. And you can see the damage that we have is still scaling really well on our four in heroics, which is really surprising considering that the damage numbers look similar to what we saw outside, right? Like, it's not like I'm, I didn't lose a lot. See, it's very effective, that SLA, Spring Storm. Five spell points. And it, it actually does, like, a little AoE lightning effect. Super cool. Up, down, up, down. The other spell I have on my bar. I have Prismatic Spray. Because that's... That will, like, be my oh shit spell, because that one there will, has a chance to just basically turn them to stone, uh, dispel them, insta-kill them. Then I've got my color spray SLA, um, and then all these other SLAs. So you can see this SLA is 5, this is 4, this is 25, so this is the most expensive SLA. That's 2, that's 4. And then this is just a regular spell. It costs 51 points to cast, but that's because I have all the meta magics on it. Um, I think I have my other meta magics. No, actually, okay, so I don't have all of them on it. I have Heighten and I have Quicken. It's very expensive. That's why I'm only really going to use that when, like, a Reaper is there or a boss or something like that. Um, I have not yet turned on all of them. I will once I hit epics. I'll turn on all the meta magics, but not yet. And then, if you're curious, I'm running with energy criticals as my one of the epics. I'm running with fast healing. I'm running with skill mastery, and then I'm running with brace. And then my iconic is deep gnome. That gives me illusion DCs since I'm doing color spray. Right now, my DC on it's 49, which is decent for heroics. And when I leveled up, I'll show you guys this if anybody's curious. I actually posted this build on the TDO forum. So if you wanted to try it out, you can go to the forum. Uh, look under Sorcerer. They hadn't busted out Chaos Mancer yet as an archetype. Um, so I just put it under. If you look, you'll see my post where I have my Chaos Mancer build. Um, I gave it a name. It's got a name from Baldur's Gate. There was a wild mage. I forget her name. I, when I made the post, I like looked up her name. Um, but it's basically a reference to a, just like a classic Baldur's Gate character from the Forgotten Realms. Um, I took Heighten at level 15. Quick and empower, maximize, and then the other that I'm doing is evoke and greater evoke. That's pretty much it. That's all I have. And then at level 18, we will take force of personality, which will allow us to use our charisma as our will save, basically. You could take something else, you know, like... All right, so now this Fear Reaper can kill us. We, I have two stacks already. So I'm going to have to be careful. I was thinking about running Crystal Cove. I certainly can do that. If you guys think that that would be interesting or if you want to see me run Crystal Cove with random people, just let me know and I'll go and see if I can find a pug and, and run that with. I, I doubt that it's going to be super exciting because a lot of people do Crystal Cove and it's pretty much the same thing just over and over and over. But, I mean, I'm happy to do it. I mean, so for R4, this damage definitely holds up. 
should be able to color spray them. Yeah, and see, the color spray just killed them. So that's really good. Color spray is my SLA. I do have all the meta magics on that. So I have all the meta magics on all these SLAs. It's just this isn't an SLA. So I, you know, I don't want to burn through all my mana. But that spell will save us if we need it. And if you see hammer time, it means that anything that you hit will be knocked down, which is exactly what just happened. We easily could be killed by Plague Reaper. But we, we got lucky. We blinded it. Like, the Reapers are the scariest thing. So, hope everybody's having a good Friday. I hope you guys had a good week. It was, it's been really hot here. Really humid. All right, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to see if Frago can pick this door. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm just gonna bell it. Bells from old gold rolls. I'm not sure, I don't think Frago can get that actually, now that I think about it. And we don't have access to Jarling until we're level 18, so. I could have gone and, and diploed the guy and gotten the password or the key or whatever, but. I never use the bells, so I figure why not? I'll use a bell. Uh, up, down, up, down. So I looked at the Crystal Cove gear and I didn't see anything new. Like I have everything that I want from Crystal Cove already. Um, I don't know if you guys know, I can actually show you this. You probably do know it though, but like if you wanted some of the old gear, you can still get it. it well, at least I thought you could still get it because in the bar, if you look behind like the pile of the, the kegs that they have there, there's the old trader. It should allow you to like trade for some old pieces if you wanted that. And some of the old pieces are actually better than the new pieces, so certainly um, worth it if if there's something that you're using. But I am running around with like Crystal Cove stuff. I use the um, my my epic weapon is from Crystal Cove. All right, Illyria, you're gonna pull that lever. The damage on these things is kind of slow. Oh, they're taking, like, reduced chaos damage, so... Not sure why, but... Yeah, we'll take that. Guild Renown, that's really cool. 
the guild renown is just so out of control because it's um I, like I've been trying to level my guild up on Star Loner for years. It's taken me years and years. Like if you don't use the potions that they sell, it's just so slow. I'm hoping that they revamp the the guilds um you know give us like player housing and revamp the guild ship and make it a bit easier for people to get their guilds leveled up is there a reaper in here there is there's two All right, we've got to take care of that Famine Reaper. All right, Famine Reaper's dead. It was really scary. We had a Plague Reaper and a Famine Reaper. The Famine Reapers are super scary because they can do that um, horrid wilting, which is very, does a shit ton of damage. But with all the Reaper points I spent, I get close to a thousand hit points, which is really good. So that certainly helps keep us alive. So this one here on Hardcore League, I've seen people get knocked by the, an air elemental into the wall and die. So, like, I'm always trying to consciously stay away from that wall over there. And that uh, prismatic spray just banished all three of those. So, that was great. He's immune. It's the one downside of that spring storm is that they can make a reflex save. And even though my DC is 47, uh, you know, a lot of mobs have good reflex saves. So sometimes they don't take any damage or they take half damage. I just basically pin her, put her on passive, and hope that she doesn't run into the wall. Sometimes she does. All right, so this dude can be a pain. And I should probably use a death ward potion so I don't get level drained. Right, Famine Reaper's dead. I'm going to Prismatic Spray all these. Yeah, see, it's awesome. It just took care of all of it. All right, I think the Vampire's still here, though. But, like I said, there's my Death Ward. Did he just... what happened? Oh, there he is. Alright, let's go, buddy. There you go. I thought he, like, materialized outside the room. Oh, I just got the dance party. Well, now I'm aft for ten seconds. There's nothing you can do about this, by the way. It's, it's CC. You're you're F. The only good thing about the dance party is 
if a mob runs up to you and hits you, they have a chance of being dance partied themselves. So most of the time you don't have to worry about like being murdered by a reaper because they'll be danced at the same time you are. But I always worry that it's not going to work like they're, they're resisted or something. All right, we're going to do the same thing. Just going to basically use our big damage spell on these things. There. So I got rid of most of them with that prismatic spray. It's S tier. That that is an S tier spell. Absolutely. 100%. Probably one of the best spells in the game, I think. This one. Prismatic Spray. Prismatic Ray, too, is really good. That would probably be A tier, because it's single target. All right, so I basically just pin her right there at the lever. And then we'll drop down. Activate this stuff. So we lost track of her, what she was targeting, but the game is coded in a way that we won't need it. She should be able to find the lever on her own if everything works correctly. And so in order to do that, what we need to do is like blanket so we have nothing targeted. And then we just basically tell her to utilize. And she should interact, but she's facing. But she hit the wrong thing, so I have to I have to hit it again. Basically just keep hitting this until she hits it. There it is. Okay, she did it. And she'll she'll actually come back with like text saying I'll get right on it and then she'll basically try to interact with whatever's near her and she did it correctly so we're all set with her I've got death ward on um, I'm going to pop a couple of my boss killers we talked to this dude okay so here's one there's two there's three and then I'll do the fourth all right so I've got all the boss killer stuff activated and where is this dude? He's right there. I just have to focus on killing him. Everything else will vanish. And I'm trying not to stand still so I don't get hit by some random mind flare. There. Okay, we got him. We should be safe. Looks like it. Looks like it phased one more time, which is okay. Oh, that's a famine reaper. So I've got a. Try to color spray it. Okay, got it. Okay, and I say this every time. If you're on Hard Curly, don't touch the docent. You can check and see if it's safe by looking at your quest log. If it says explore anything of value, you can still touch this docent if you're on Hardcore. But if somebody touches it, which I'll touch it right now, you'll see this, this text pop up. And then the quest thing changes to report back. So if you see report back, if, if I touch this dose and again, I'll die. It's like an insta-kill. So you don't want to die that way on hardcore. So best advice is just not touch it. Just let the party leader touch it. But people try to like um, grief, you know, like troll and will tell you to pick it up. And only one person can touch it once. If it says that report back, it'll, it'll be an insta-kill. It's a shitty way to die on hardcore, so...
especially because you had to get to like level 16 or 15 to get here. Uh, although on hardcore, people probably wouldn't do these until they were like level 16, 17, 18 maybe, depending on the split. Right, I think this is a level 14, so if it were a two-level split, you'd come in here at 16, but if it were a four-level split, you could come in at level 18. It's just a lot of time on hardcore. You don't want to, you know, mess around and die to something stupid. But, I mean, that R4 went really well, right? Like, it was pretty, pretty easy. This one here, I'm not so sure about, though, just because of the, um, the endless spawning stuff at the end. My, this might be a waste of time. This may be a fail. Just given the way that this quest is set up, R4 is probably going to be a waste, but we'll try it. It's a great time to get an iron pot on your head, right? When you're fighting a carnage reaper. Alright, I do have to watch out for traps. And there's a famine reaper. I'm gonna try to color spray it. Okay, the color spray failed. We get one shrine, so... Now I've got plus eight to my strength. I could just go beat these things up. Okay, we'll take the mana. Uh, I'm just gonna use my, like, cheapest SLA to get rid of these dudes. I mean, that's a level one spell, although it looks like he resisted it. Okay, that got him. Oh, that... Okay. I had the wrong one targeted. Okay, Famine Reaper. Gotta get a color spray on these two Reapers. Alright, got that one. Get another color spray. Okay, nice. Okay, he's dead, he's dead. This dude... No, get me away from him. Alright, great. Now, where did this dude come from? I thought we got rid of him. I guess I missed him. So I'm going to try to stay out of combat for a second and get myself healed up. Since I'm not using a cleric. Uh, it looks like something's still aggroed on me because my heals haven't gone up yet. So apparently there's something down in that hallway that's still aggroed. I'm assuming something is aggroed on me somewhere. I don't know though. Like, But this should reset my heals. Alright, there they are. They're reset now. Um, this hallway can have a giant trap, right? So, what I'm gonna do in order to spring it is I'm just going to basically pull out a Larry, who's only level 3, and gonna put her on attack, and then I'm gonna target that cleric, and I'm gonna have her, like, target it and run. It's, she'll run at it. They'll kill her right away, but hopefully she pops if there's a trap. I didn't see a trap. Go get him. 
Yeah, see, I'm not seeing a trap, so... Think I'm safe? We're gonna try. We'll just do like a jump over that. Oh, there it was. No, that wasn't a trap. That was a dead body. Okay. Thought that was a trap. We're going to have to, like, prismatic spray all these things, I think. Oh, that was great. So that was a really good, um, like, proc of that hammer time thing that knocked all those people down. I'm actually using one of my heals are the potions that they give you for making an iconic. They give you a stack of these greater healing elixirs and they actually do like a hot so i just am basically using them instead of a wand normally i'd have a wand there but some scroll healing with heal scrolls and then using these and i, I have a bunch of them in my bank i've just been saving them uh every iconic life i would just save them so i figured it's probably a good time to actually start using them now There's usually a trap right here. Yes, there was, but... We positioned ourselves to not hit it. And that's exactly what I was talking about last week when I was saying, hey, they should have... They should do, like, more Grave University and let us do, like, a quasi-Harry Potter where we actually, like, go to school and learn how to deal with some of the stuff in this game. Um, it would be like how to navigate a trap without actually being able to find or disable a trap. Just doing what I just did, like running right up to it and then moving through it without engaging it. Like, we'll have to hit it again on the way out, but I should be able to not get hit by it because I will, like, jump over it. We technically don't need to worry about that guy, but we... I don't want to, like... Get a red alert, so I'll take care of him. And then we need XP, so I'm just going to break everything. But this is what I'm talking about. So I do have a fast movement option, which is what I would recommend. But I can just time it out and run through it. And if you run through it, like, when it's going, like right now, then you shouldn't get hit by it. It takes a little bit of practice. It's one of the interesting things about the way traps hit in DDO. Like, generally, if you can see it, it's safe to move through it. But that's not always the case. You have to basically try it out on the different types of traps. Like, the things like the Whirly Blades will definitely kill you if they pop up underneath you while you're running over them. But if they're already up... Wow. Wow. I got a lucky surge right there because I think that I was getting close to being killed by that champion. So that was a really useful... That was the... Um, let's take a look at that. That's not the right page. Go to DDO. What we just saw was the um, who's dead, right? It kills everybody nearby and revives our nearby allies, called Who's Dead. There we go. I don't think there's any traps. All right, this is optional, so I'm going to skip this. So we still have 66% mana. 
I do have a shrine that I can use. I'll save it. And might as well rebuff. It's my death ward is going to run out. I'll actually do a little bit more. I'll give myself those. I think it's really cool that the damage holds up in Reaper, right? Like, I'm not losing a lot at all. I bet we made that dude insane. Let's take a look at his stats. I think that's exactly what he's got. Where's his thing? Indigo Beam. Yeah, I drove him insane. <laughs> I think that's my favorite effect. All right, so we I want to take care of him though, just because I don't want to get a um like a red alert if I because we will have a bunch of mobs up later. So don't want any lingering mobs here and now. Cuz when we do the last room it's going to be a mess. But I've got to take care of the packs. The packs is that yellow screen and it's a very bad effect that gives you a magical disease that basically slows you it's, it's super annoying if that thing pops up all the time and that was one color spray Hopefully there's no trap on this door. All right, I'm going to try to color spray that dude. We got him. And I'll do my... Oh, I'm phased out, so I'm not going to do any damage. I have to wait until I'm no longer phased. All right, here we go. That was really good. Get the lost soul. Yeah, so I have all of the, the gear that I want from Crystal Cove. It is really good gear, though. If you're, if you're new and you don't have all the Crystal Cove stuff, I highly recommend taking a look at it. Um, really useful stuff, like the Ring of the Buccaneer is one of the pieces I think that's very good um the spyglass if you're intelligence based is very good it's just some a lot of really good stuff kevin head how's it going happy friday good to see you oh we got another one but nobody no mobs were there to kill that is really cool, though. Uh, did I get lost? I did. Gotta go this way. Glass cannon is good, yeah. I mean... I've got myself pretty tough. Like, I don't really feel like a super glass cannon, but now I've got, like, I'm CC'd and there's a Plague Reaper, so I'm kind of nervous. I'm hoping that he gets CC'd. No. <laughs> it's like the worst case scenario to get that dance CC with a Plague Reaper standing next to me, but... I'm just color spraying this whole hallway, and then I'll do my prismatic spray. Good. Um, I don't want to get hit by that light beam that cleric is doing. Oh, that was good. So the fast healing that I'm running with is super helpful, because it's adding to the healing, so I don't really have to worry about... A lot of my hit points will just come back naturally. Um, but I do need to worry about the champions because they can hit really hard. This one, I tried to CC it. We turned it to stone. I 
Anytime you see the hammer, it means that anything you hit is going to be knocked down. Super cool. It's like really, really good. Took me a while to figure that out. I had no idea. I thought hammer time had to do with the dance, like... But it actually is pretty useful. So is shields up. Shields up is useful. They just it gave me a cast of shield. 15 minute cast. Like, that's really good. Some of these surges are really, really good. So we made it. We still have 40% mana. And the truth is, I probably could go and do the rest of this quest without using a shrine. I mean, that's pretty amazing on a sorcerer, to be honest. So, like, I think that they did a phenomenal job with the the mana management, which has always been a, a, a downside of the sorcerer. You know, I have, like, a stack of old spell point potions here, these greater mnemonic enhancers, and I haven't had to use any of them. And those, I've had that stack for, I don't even know, since Ravenloft came out. Like, because back then, when I was a Sork, I just went through mana so fast. I, I had to buy them. You know, it was something that, as soon as they put on that sale where you could... Um, this dude is just tearing me up. Gotta get rid of them. Wow. Came really close to dying there. He did a force dot and a fire dot. We used prismatic spray and it basically took care of everything for us. So that's why I love that spell. I fully expect to be murdered in the last room, by the way. There's just so much junk that can happen in there. I completely missed him. All right, there we go. So hopefully we don't get a lot of Reapers in the last room. Our heals are really, really slow when we're in combat, so. Oh, that's a good, th this would be a good lesson for the class, right? For the, for the, um, the class on how to mitigate traps. So if you run, run into this trap when it's not up, like now, you get hit by it, right? But if you run through it when it's up already, like now, you don't have to worry about it. Right? So, like, it's sort of counterintuitive to think about running into it when you can see it. But in this game, that's just how it works. If you if you try to go through when it's not there, it's a, it's a great way to get hit by it. So, And that works for those whirly blades as well. Although, those are more dangerous than that one that I just passed by, but... You guys may have your own tricks for getting through them. Uh, so for here, you know what I want to do? I want to actually change my bar a little bit. All right, so these are all the boss killers. And then this here I'll use as like a single target. So, and we're actually going to trigger some of these now. Alright, so that there's a single target. So I just evaporated him. And that was really good. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on that wizard over there. And that one up there. So we're not hitting him for some reason. All right, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. 
He's gone. <laughs> gonna get that soul of ice over there. I'm gonna try to get him again. All right, he's gone. Get this ranger, okay? Get that cleric down there. All right, and what I'm using to nuke these guys is this prismatic ray. It's super expensive, but it's like awesome. So now I should be okay to sort of like start triggering some of this without getting attacked with by the range. But I, it's probably, like I said, I kind of expect to die because this room sucks. That did zero damage to him, and I'm taking some sort of frost damage. Who is doing that frost damage to me? Is that that... That, um, elemental? That's so dumb. Yeah, this dude is doing, like, a... Yeah, soul of ice. That makes sense. What I wanted to do is get closer, close enough to res, because I kind of knew I was going to die. So at least now we can res. In case you're wondering why I just ran into a trap. I didn't want to die in that other room and be too far away to res here, because I don't have any cakes. Um, so we already used that, so I just have to basically rest... I kind of expected this. Like I said, that last room sucks. Like, I usually don't do this one on R4 just because it sucks, but... The only thing worse than that champion would have been like a Reaper. Like a Famine Reaper. Alright, so while I wait for my thing to go off, I'm going to pull out a Leary and get a little bit of mana. Since a lot of the stuff I'm using to kill this stuff really fast costs a lot. Uh, and she can Divine Vitality me. I think what I'll do going into that fight is put some resists on me. I didn't bother to go get house P buffs, but that probably would have made it a lot easier because right now I only have my ice resist is 26, which that actually for heroics, my fire and ice are pretty high, but I can get them higher by individually casting. So there now it's 56 for ice and 56 for fire, which is way better. I probably should buff myself with all of them just in case we get like a caster who's, who does something. There's that and then electric. So now I've, everyone is over 40. And we'll also do this to give myself some immunities. And then we'll finish Larry. We should be good to go soon. All right, she's done. So we have 50%. And the last thing I need is, yeah, I'll do Death Ward. I'll also do my Freedom of Movement, even though I'm wearing boots with it. We have it. Don't have knockdown immunity yet. All right, I'm just going to basically try to ignore him. And that fire alley is not a champ, so I'm going to ignore him too. I've got to get these activated so I can do the boss fight. All right, so now the boss is active. Just gonna jump down and basically nuke him as fast as I can. Mm -hmm. 
not enough XP for the for how disastrous that was. Twenty six thousand. It should have been like forty six thousand. I think my opinion. Like it's a lot of risk for not much reward, but you know it is what it is. I think the next one is a lot more XP than this one. The um, cry for help. But Cry for Help kind of sucks because there's a trap in Cry for Help that I can't do anything about. I'm just going to have to basically leap over it and hope that I don't get hit by it. So that's what I'm going to do, basically. We'll put our fast movement option back on our bar. Because we will actually need to use it. And then um, we'll just try to wing over. I mean, that went well. We did have a death, but I kind of expected it. Yeah, I can't think of anything really bad from Crystal Cove. Do any of you guys think of anything that's bad from Crystal Cove? I play gaming. How you doing, man? That's Cord, right? That's. I think that's your handle. I hope you're doing well, man. We're going to do this on R4 as well. Yeah, that's you. Or the soloist. Nice. I got the ice orbs from Crystal Cove. That was the last thing that I actually farmed for. I think they're pretty cool. Although I really haven't been using orbs that much. Uh, the shield that I'm using right now, there is a good shield that comes from Crystal Cove, but I'm actually using the one from the Halloween event. Um, I like the um, the Death Ward that's on it. It also has like um, protection from evil, which will keep me from being commanded. I do have Circle of Protection, but it just gives me like something that can't be dispelled, so I actually like that. So we just jumped that trap. We're going to basically jump all the traps in here. I don't have access to Darling for another couple of levels. And the damage is still really solid. And that's a level one spell for two spell points. SLA, and I have it all maximized and powered. Like, this is super cool. I haven't quite decided yet whether or not I think it would be cool to play one of these on hardcore. I, I mean, I really like the damage and I like the mana management, but I'm not sure if the wild magic would just be a little bit too dangerous. It certainly would be fun, though. I don't know if it would be worth doing it if you were going for 5k, but maybe if you didn't care. Because the damage is really good. Uh, I think there is a trap here. Yeah, the floor drops in front of us. So I just got like the worst bad effect. <laughs> I'm dancing, but hopefully I make everything around me dance. All right, I did. <laughs> God, that's, that's terrifying. <laughs> What's wrong with these people? All right, the Reaper is trying to get me. Oh, this is like gone so bad. All right, you I don't care about. Where's the Reaper? Oh, he's right there. All right. I'm gonna die in here, I know it. Oh, I got him. All right, he's dead. Now I can at least heal. What a bad time to get that dance proc.
I have no idea how much these traps will do if I hit one, if it'll do over 300, so I'm kind of scared to move without getting myself at least over 500. It's so slow to heal when there's still stuff around, too. All right, there we are. We're over 500 now, so. Can I hit him with that? Yeah, I can hit him with that. Can I hit him with that? Yes. Okay, great. All right, now I should be able to heal myself up because everything's dead. And something dispelled me, so I'm going to refresh. Sometimes there's a trap on that wall. Alright, there's definitely a trap here, but the floor doesn't drop until I get the key. I can hit them with that? No, of course not. The one bad thing about that spell, it's just really hard. Oof. I thought it didn't drop until you got the key. It's when you kill that dude. It's good to know. The Rakshasa. Oh, I've got the disease, the dragon pox, or whatever that is. Alright, there we go. Alright, we're getting close to that part where I may die in the trap. Oh, I'm a rat. God, I can't do anything. <laughs> I They need to fix it so the wings go on the rat. Nice. Knocked down, but it doesn't matter. There we go. Nice. That was great. Yeah, it's the close range. That spell is really good. Um, so this is the trap right here. Just not even going to worry about it, man. I'm just going to blast through it, right? Just in case. I'm going to aim right there. That actually worked really well. Who knew? It's kind of like they coded it that way. You accidentally get stuck in that trap, though. There's like 
all sorts of nasty shit on the ceiling that you get blown up into. All right, there could be a trap on this. Yes, there is, but I wasn't standing in it. I'm missing a lot of XP by not getting these traps. However, I'm not able to use Darling yet. And the only other way to get a Hireling Trapper is to use a Gold Seal. And I just don't want to buy a Gold Seal. Unfortunately, you just can't buy a normal rogue hireling. They have them gated behind the um, astral shard. That paywall. I'm going to try to use like a small amount of mana to take care of all these. Should be able to get that, dude. Oh, there's a Reaper up there. Oh, and it's a Famine Reaper. I have to be careful. Okay, he warped me. Good. Wow, everything I cast on him failed. There it goes. Hit him again. There we go. I'm huge. Can I jump up there? Nice. Oh, the squirrels. They actually confused me. Yeah. Okay, we've got a Plague Reaper up there. He just warped me. Okay, and we were able to get him. Can I actually damage him? No. I kind of miss Eldritch Knight having that elemental damage on my attacks, but wild casters don't even have access to it at all. I could multi-class to get it, but not really worth losing out on a capstone because the capstone for wild mage is really good. So this thing is going to hit me really hard. Yeah, fuck, man. You see that? That was one. That was an. So you know what that was? We'll, we'll look at it. Because this is just ridiculous. That is this thing here that just killed me. Personal bad weather. Thirty-five percent electrical damage, and then after ten seconds, you're struck by lightning. You see, just one shot me. So I mean, like that would be terrible if that were hardcore. If you died to like a wild magic surge like that, I knew it was coming too, and I like was going to like put protection from elements on myself, but I was wasn't fast enough. Yeah, that is no joke. My normal electric is 16, so if I look at the combat log... You can see it right here. I took 1,049 points of electrical damage. 16 were blocked by my 
thing and I was killed by misadventure. So it counts, it like has it coded like a trap. It's like a personal lightning trap. That is bullshit. So yeah, you want to make sure that if you're going to do like a wild caster on hardcore that you have a lot of electrical resist. Make sure you get those house P buffs. Because you could be doing R4s and get one, like get a bad surge on yourself, and you're, you're fucked if you don't get, get your mitigation up somehow. Like, that was a lot of damage for heroic... Okay, I think there is a trap right here. No. It's going to assume that there is a trap, though. I'm just going to jump through here. I think. Not sure what I heard. Oh, it's a Plague Reaper. Uh... All right, we made him insane. Nice. Oh, that's the best possible result there. Let's take a look at him. Yeah, Plague Reaper. Indigo Beam, I drove him insane. Effectively takes them off the map because I think that's permanent. I don't think they ever recover from that, but We'll take him out anyway, just just to be safe, but oh, Actually he vanished There he is Oh, actually he did recover no no he didn't He's still insane. Yeah, so it's a permanent thing. I keep getting bad surges. All right, I just used all my stuff. There we go. Oh, there's a caster. Oh my god, he hit me for a ton. I've got to, like, put some elemental resists on me here. Alright, so going to throw up a sleet storm and a glitter dust bomb and a dancing ball. And then I'll pop all of my boosts. Okay. Alright, here we go. He's completely immune to my dancing ball. Oh, negative levels. There we go. 
fix that. I mean, I think that went pretty well. It could have been a lot worse. But for R4, we get a thousand Reaper XP. So it's not really worth the eff extra effort to do these in heroic, like to do R4 in heroic. But I just like to show the fact that this Chaos Mancer Wild Magic is definitely strong enough to do it if you wanted to. Completely, like the damage stays. Now, I don't know if it stays if you do like R8 or R10, but for R4, it's completely fine. I'm assuming it holds up though on R8, it would be fine. Maybe somebody in chat has tried a Chaos Mancer in R10 and can let us know. I'm assuming it's good though. Where are you going? Hunting for gold that is flowing Somewhere in the cold world Yet there is no knowing Hey la, oh la 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 We love games, there's a standing stone Let's make camp We love games, let's make camp And play more games Hey la, oh la 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 We love games Where are you going? There's no knowing What magic awaits What evil is growing Treasures high 